please come with me. And if you'd be kind enough to take a seat, thank you. Right, so my name's Dr Gill. Um, just before we start, could I please confirm your name and date of birth, please? Yeah, it's Abby Tut, the 7th of December 1996. Thank you. So today, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we're here to do an asthma review, is that correct? So tell me, how's your asthma at the moment? It's been okay, the usual symptoms, I think I'm managing it well. Okay, that's good. And can you tell me when was your asthma first diagnosed? I think I was about three or four. Um, I remember going to the hospital a lot and being ill a lot, so I was, I was quite young. Okay, so quite, quite young then, as you say. And in terms of the symptoms, how are they at the moment? Um, I have a little bit of chest tightness, um, sometimes I get a bit out of breath, particularly I've got quite a lot of stairs at work and I'm trying to use them instead of using the lift, uh, so I get quite out of breath then, and sometimes it can get a little bit worse at night, but I think that's generally what I expect now. Okay, how far can you go up the stairs before you become short of breath? It's about two flights of stairs. Okay, so not not terrible. No. When your asthma is good, though, how far can you go up the stairs? Uh, I can get to the top of the building, which is the full floor. Okay, so it doesn't interrupt when no. things are normally. And how often would your asthma be that bad that you can only get up the two flights? I think it's roughly oh, it must be about once a week, so four times a month. Okay, okay. And when your asthma is flaring, what symptoms are you getting? Uh, so it's the breathlessness, the tight, tight chest. Um, my colleagues say I wheeze a little bit. Uh, so it's just generally like I feel like I can't get enough air in. Okay. Now your colleagues have mentioned wheeze. Have you been troubled by wheeze? Uh, I, I, I think I have. Uh, I tend to zone out of it. I don't notice it as much, uh, but it's okay. other people telling me. Fair enough. And in terms of other people telling you, have you had any difficulty speaking because of the asthma? Uh, I, particularly when I'm breathless, I can't. I have to hopefully get to the meeting for everyone else so I can sit down and just catch my breath before. Okay. Now, in terms of that asthma, um, obviously that can sometimes be uh, associated with other medical conditions, mm -hmm. such as you know a atopy or um, um, you know things where your immune system is in overdrive. Um, do you have any other associated medical problems? Uh, I do get a patch of eczema on my arm. Um, okay. But that's that's about it. Um, what treatment are you having for the eczema? Uh, just creams. Just, I think it's hydrocortisone, I think it is. So I just put it on when it flares up, but it's not too, not too bad. So from what I'm hearing, your asthma sort of flares about once a week, which is actually quite frequent from my perspective. Mm. When was the last time you had a flare of your eczema, though? Um, I think, God, I can't remember now, about three or four weeks ago. Okay. It wasn't, it, they say that that's fairly well controlled, I, I can sort that out pretty quickly. Okay, so even though it's very well controlled, when, how often would your eczema be a problem for you? If it's a problem I can't control, probably once every one to two months. Um, okay. But normally, okay. as I say, I can get it before it becomes irritating. Okay, so we've got a, couple, uh, a few of the inhalers here. Uh, which is the inhaler you use? Uh, it's this middle one here. Okay, so we've got the metered inhaled dose inhaler. Okay, and which colour inhalers have you got? Uh, it's blue and brown. Excellent. And how often are you using those? Uh, so I use a brown one in the morning and the evening, one mm -hmm. puff, and I use a blue one at the same time as brown, and then whenever my symptoms get bad. Okay, and have you ever had an asthma attack while you've actually needed to go to the hospital at all? Uh, yes, but I haven't had one this year. Okay, so you haven't had one this year, we're in September at the moment. So when was that last asthma attack, do you recall? I think it was December, November last year. I, I was just overdoing it, I was a bit stupid and wasn't taking care of myself and it just got a bit out of hand. Okay, did you have to stay overnight or did they resolve that for you in the end? Uh, they kept me in for observations overnight and then I was able to go the next day. Okay, quite serious then. I'm surprised that we're just on that slightly low dose. But do you know why that is at the moment? Uh, I just, I, I haven't come back to the doctors for a while. I've just been powering on with it. So this was a badly needed overview. 
So thank you for coming back. Um, you know, let's see if we can improve things for you today. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go through the Royal College of Physicians three questions, if that's okay. And that will give me a good idea about where your asthma management is. I must confess, before we go any further, it does sound like we're going to have to change a few things today. But let's, you know, double check and see. So over the last month, have you had difficulty with your sleep because of uh, your asthma symptoms? Uh, yes, I do wake up um, at least a couple of times in the night per week. Okay. So, I mean, even as you're saying that happening once, um, once a week, I think we're going to know the answer to this. Mm. So in the last month, have you been troubled by your usual asthma symptoms during the day? Uh, yeah, it's the, it's the stairs that are looming. Um, I have noticed it going around the shops as well, come to think of it. Okay. So. And you're answering our third question there. In the last month, have you noticed the asthma is interfering with your activities? So we're certainly going to have to um, address and improve things for you today. Now, you mentioned the exercise. Um, do you know what other triggers there are for your asthma? Uh, stress is quite a big one. Uh, okay. I try and, try and keep it down at work, but it's not always possible. Um, and then it's I sometimes I sit if the weather changes I'm not 100% sure why and uh, if I've if we've just went done a big clean at home and I know the dust is everywhere it can get uh, a bit bad yeah. so the dust is a, is a, a big one now with those um, uh, that frequency that almost weekly exacerbation that you're having any idea if any of those triggers seem to be contributing most I think I think it's a stress here it's generally so we're talking around about the end of the week and we have our big meetings at work so they're quite stressful. Okay so you've mentioned work several times what is it you do for work? Uh, I'm a PA in an office. Okay fair enough and is there anything that we might be able to do to help with that stress at work do you think? Um, I, I think solving this would help because then I'm not stressed about my asthma flaring up. Uh, okay. I just I, I think I probably would do with some holiday but I've got some coming up so that's good. Good. Okay, so we've got a peak flow meter here. Um, do you check your peak flow at home? Uh, I should, I do try to. <laughs> um, I, once a week at least. <laughs> okay, do you know what your peak flow uh, readings are? Uh, it's roughly about 400. Oh, okay, so 400 perhaps is a little bit low. We'll, we'll have to uh, do the calculation with your height and weight yeah. to make sure that we've got the right um, uh, target for you. Um, in terms of your reliever, so the blue inhaler, you've mentioned that you're, you know, you seem to be struggling about once a, uh, once a month. How often would you use your reliever during the day? So on a good day, it's in the morning and evening with a brown one, maybe once, twice if a day. On a bad day, it could be anywhere up to six, eight times a day. Okay, so that's quite a high use from my perspective. So that, that worries me a little bit. Do you have a personal uh, asthma management plan from your previous doctor? Uh, that, that does ring a bell. <laughs> okay, so we'll certainly sort that for you in a minute, particularly because I think I want to change um, your medications. So we've got a, te a trial inhaler there, so there's no medication in that. That should be the same as yours. Would you be able to just demonstrate your inhaler technique so we can make sure things are okay? Um, and then we'll check your peak flow. Okay, so good. So you sat up nice and straight. I could see you breathe out before you use the uh, inhaler and you breathed in as you sprayed the inhaler and held it for 10 seconds. So you're doing all the right things there. So that really does suggest that we need to look at other areas to try and maximise your asthma. So uh, when did you last check your peak flow? Okay, so this is, brand, uh, this is a brand new uh, device. Yeah. So um, if I could get you to stand up and we'll do your peak flow and we're going to do the best of three. Okay. Okay, so nice deep breath in and then short, sharp blow out. Okay, let's see where we go with that. Okay, so 350, so a little bit lower than what you'd uh, suggested. So when you're ready, so nice deep breath. Okay, similar. So let's see if we can get over that 400 you said. So full breath and as hard and fast as you can. Hey. <laughs> 
Okay, that's much better. So we've got 400, but that's still, I think, lower than we'd need to uh, do for yourself. I'm just going to calculate uh, what it is that we need for uh, that for you. So we've got your height already. Um, let's just put this in here. Okay, so we've got you at 24 years of age and we've got a height of 165 according to the nurses earlier. You're Caucasian and female and you just gave us a peak flow of 400, um, so we've got a 424 uh, litres for normal. We've got a 318 litres for the bottom end of normal, showing you're actually at 94%, which is very good for what we are at the moment. So not, uh, you know, not too shabby at all, particularly saying how things have been affecting at the moment. But let's uh, look at perhaps improving things for yourself. So you've got the blue and the brown yeah. inhaler. What we'll do is we'll pause those and instead we're going to get, give you another um, MDI inhaler because you certainly seem to be getting on with that. Your technique was good. And we will um, swap that to a pink inhaler, a new medication called Foster. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a that as your reliever and your preventer. Okay, so we use, um, we'll do one puff in the morning and one puff in the evening. But if you feel unwell, if you feel that your asthma is causing you more problems, then you can take another uh, breath during the day. If that doesn't settle things within a few minutes, say you know two to ten minutes, then you can use another um, inhaler, uh, another dose of it, and you can do that up to six times in the day. Now here's the important bit: if you've used it six times in the day, then and you've still not improved, then I would strongly, strongly advise you to go to the A and E department so we can get you um, seen. Yeah. Now conversely, if you find that you've used it and things have settled, nevertheless, because the additional medications that are in there, I would like to see you in the practice within 48 hours, okay. so we can perhaps look at what caused that exacerbation and what we might need to do to improve things for you. Does that sound like a reasonable plan for yourself? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so the other thing with that that we need to do is, given we're moving to that um, new approach, we need to make sure that we're all aware of um, you know, the emergency signs of asthma. Mm. So do you know what those are at the minute? I remember um, there's feeling scared and uh, chest tightness and shortness of breath. Okay, so you're absolutely correct. So if we're having difficulty breathing, that's going to be the first one, and that should tell us that there's something going on that we need to pay attention to. Um, we want to... Uh, we would worry and increase our concern if you're finding that the, your, um, your new inhaler as a reliever isn't giving you any benefit. And we're going to get even more concerned if you're finding it difficult to speak. That's going to be a real key feature where I'm going to want you to call 999 and get seen straight away. Okay. And the other things that we want you to do is keep an eye on your peak flow. So you've said you've got one of those at home. Mm -hmm. When you're in that situation, if you can test and see where you are, one again, one of the emergency signs is going to be that your peak flow is below 50%. Okay. Okay. And with that, when uh, we're talking about increasing up your inhaler, we know that things aren't going well for yourself when they're between 75% and 50%. So that's very much a time when we need to arrange that appointment to see where we are and what's the next step for yourself, okay? So I will make sure that that is um, sorted and emailed to you as an asthma management plan. Yep. What questions have you got for me? Uh, I don't think I have too many. I'm, I'm kind of excited to get this under control. <laughs> well, hopefully it'll give you a much better quality of life, but I would really, regardless, like to touch base with you in a month's time, assuming you haven't had to come in further, so we can check your peak flow and we can decide whether or not you're on the right dose of medication and maybe make any other changes that are needed. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions for myself before we say cheerio? Uh, no. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been useful and we'll see you later. Thank you. Take care.